I just have this word burning on the inside of me. So I know it's probably for someone who's watching this now, or you'll watch it later, but it's about building right now. And, you know, we are in a real time of shaking in the world and also transition. Many of us are in this place of transition, but with the shaking that's come and the transition we're in, many of us feel like we're going through like that phrase, the eye of the needle or being really, really pressed right now <laughs> on every side. Some of you are like, that's me. It's on every side right now. And when you're in that place of shaking and transition, there's obviously some resistance from the enemy that comes. And I want to share with you a few things that I found that help when you're experiencing a little bit of resistance from the enemy. Or what I would say is you feel like you're going through warfare in this season right now, tonight, you feel like, oh man, Anna, can I relate? This last week has been like, whoa. <laughs> um, some things that I've found personally that help me these are things that I have to remind myself on, okay? I'm still trying to get this down too, but the Lord was speaking to me about David. And we know this about David. He's going into battle and he worships mm -hmm. despite being surrounded by his enemies. Mm -hmm. Worship, and Julie obviously teaches on this the best, I think, but, but worship is such a key right now for us, especially, um, I'm going to be honest, if you turn on the media and you're getting infiltrated by just all the shakings that are happening all over the world, worship will be such a key for you and I, especially in the shaking, when you're in this ah, transition worship, worship, worship. Why? It says in the word, we enter his gates through our praise and thanksgiving. And I know that when I'm being shooken, I need to personally get in his presence yeah. to ground me. And then the second thing, these, these are all things that probably you know, but it helps to hear him again, is decree and declare what God has showed you when you're feeling discouraged. And when I was praying about this, because we know this word about, it says in the word to decree and declare um, the promises of God. But here's the thing. The opposite would be, don't release the negativity <laughs> through our mouths. And so we can speak and release right now with our mouths all the disparity that we are we look around and we might be seeing right now or we can call forth what we are believing god to do but what is what is the promise that god has spoken for you what are so i got a hold of this one day because i remember i was what i remember i was complaining let's be real there's a lot going on in the ministry. Oh, there's so much going on. And it just felt like, oh, this is horrible. We're getting hit on all sides, you know. And I remember I got on the phone and I was like, ah, blah, 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 blah. And the Lord totally rebuked me. He was like, Anna, I spoke the world into existence. What are you speaking? <laughs> I mean, it, it totally set me like, hmm. It put a muzzle on my mouth. So right now, speak, speak the promise. And like, think about when you speak with your words, imagine that you're speaking the promise of God into existence. Can you imagine that? So what are you saying right now? And I'm saying, I declare, this is what I've been declaring. I declare righteousness being restored over the nation's Lord and selflessness, not selfishness, selflessness and the love of Jesus to be restored. And I'm declaring for purity to be restored over not just our nation, the nations. So when I was recently in California, I was just there 
And then right after, as you guys know, because you guys are from California, the Santa Maria Healing Rooms um, fires, your state's on fire right now. <laughs> but I was, especially, it was, it hit home for me, although I'm in Missouri, my whole family, actually, their whole area was surrounded uh, by fire. And they were evacuated. It was like two times they were evacuated. So it's kind of intense. I'm sitting there and their phones aren't always working. I'm sitting there and I was watching the fire. Like I could see the ring of the fire and I was watching it getting closer and closer to the different properties that my family is all lives on. I have a big family out there. So I could see them all, you know, all their houses getting almost surrounded by fire. And as I was praying them, God, what are you doing? I saw in the spirit, I saw this giant angel standing with a sword in guard of their house like this. Wow. And I said, okay, I know that they're not going to get, the fires is not going to consume their house. And so I was declaring because I got a perspective to see from God. So then I was like, okay, I'm now going to declare why he showed me what I see. And so I declared in Jesus name, I declare that no fire will burn their house, that the angels are standing protecting their property. And I just kept declaring that, well, what happened is every single, you can see it on the map, the fire went through and burnt like everything all around, but not the houses. Right. <laughs> it was it's a miracle of God because it's not just my parents. I'm talking about like six different family members, all the fire coming close, but not touching their property. And I was so, so grateful. I'm like, God, you're amazing. You're amazing. So I just wanted to share that to just encourage you with this time of, of rebuilding. There's a scripture in, it's in Hebrews 12 too. Let me read it to you. It's in the passion actually. So it says, we look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. Wow. Isn't that an amazing scripture? And here's the thing. One more thing I wanted to share. I was thinking about Nehemiah this stuck with me. This has been, I just can't get past this, but listen, when Nehemiah went to rebuild the wall, do you remember that? The enemies, it said that they tried, do you remember, they tried to pursue him to come down and meet them. They were planning to ambush him by having him come down. And he said, he said it was in verse it was in chapter six, Nehemiah six. He said, no, I'm doing great work. I cannot come down. And that scripture has stuck with me. I believe right now that God has assigned you and I something so specific that we cannot be swayed or distracted by all the shaking that's happening across the world, even within our families. As I was praying for some of you listening to this right now, I saw a lot of families being shooken. But we cannot be distracted or swayed away from what God has showed us to do in this season. Because Nehemiah, when you look at this, if Nehemiah would have gone out to meet him, meet those people, perhaps they would have ambushed him. When we get our focus, you got to get this, when we get our focus off of what God has showed us to do, then we sometimes are opening ourselves up to unnecessary attack from the enemy. So I want to encourage you tonight, despite everything that's going around you and despite the shaking, to stick and stand your ground with what the Lord has showed you in this season of transition that you find yourself in. And when in also 
okay, in when I was reading about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this story, when King Nebuchadnezzar, you remember, they didn't want to bow down to the, the false idol. And when they spoke up and they said, we're not going to bow down to that, then he turned up the fire. But in that firingness, they were untouched because they would not bow down or surrender. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you right now to be bold, be absolutely bold for Jesus. Mm -hmm. be, be bold for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Be bold for purity. The very things I'm declaring over the nations, I want to encourage you all and myself too, that be, to be bold, to take a stand for Jesus and not bow down in intimidation to everything that is hitting the world right now. Mm 